Coming up next on Beyond the Clef, we have David Puckett from Indian Springs Middle School, and we're going to be talking about teaching with your hair on fire. Absolutely. If you're in a band choir or orchestra program and you want to talk about the energy and trying to be uh, that way to get your kids on all the time, you definitely want to check out this episode. Coming up next on Beyond the Clef. Beyond the Clef is presented by Director's Choice. So, David Puckett from Indian Springs Middle School Band, so happy to have you on the program. No, I'm excited to be here. Thanks for the invitation. Yeah, yeah. And so, you've done a couple of clinics at uh, uh, TMEA and with your middle school band and talking about stuff. Of course, we have viewers that are band, choir, and orchestra. You bet. And everybody. And, and it sounds like so your clinics and, and what you've done here is really, can, it can apply to everybody. Absolutely. And so, you, you had uh, two sessions that you've done you were just telling me about. What was that first one? Uh, we've done Find a Way Every Day. I did that with my colleague and partner in crime, uh, Judd Moss, in and, Keller Middle School. And, and what was that about? Um, and we, I think every program, no matter where you're doing band, choir, orchestra, theater, you're, you're going to find problems. Um, and just like we always try to tell our kids, find a way around the problems and just find a way to a solution. Um, we kind of geared it towards the band director and um, educator. It's like, there's going to be problems, you're going to have conflicts, uh, and, and what can you do to get around the problems? What are non-negotiables? Like, well, you, I can't fix that problem, but I can fix my attitude towards that problem. And trying to make it, uh, take it towards uh, successful in your in everyday life. Our problems may be facility-based or schedule-based. Um, let's make the best of it and move forward. Yeah, in my school, we uh, the administration, the whole school, apply, uh, goes with the fish philosophy. Um, which uh, one of the tenets of the fish philosophy is choose your attitude. Yes. And it, it actually, that thing really changed my life. I, I know you go into professional development, someone has this hurrah, let's do this thing now, and you're like, oh no, you know. But um, uh, really getting into these philosophies, choose your attitude is, is the same thing that you're saying here. If you just go into this and think, you know what, this is, I'm going to have a positive attitude on this one, and this is how it's going to be. And it's going to be fantastic. For Absolutely. Us. In our band hall, when I, the kids come in, I go, never volunteer negative information. Because if they walk in and they're, they're thinking, well, I haven't practiced or I didn't do this, it already puts their mindset in a negative. And it also puts the teacher's mindset in a negative if they hear that all day long. Um, and it's helped our band in the next, last couple of years that they just walk in and they look at me and they go, Good morning, Mr. Puckett. And then, like, just like, what are they going? What's the first words out of their mouth? And try to make it positive. And the last words, like, say, tell your neighbor I love band. And especially this month, it's February International I Love Band Month. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. So it's it's really you're teaching a philosophy, uh, and and it's always I feel like you have to teach procedure and you have to teach all that stuff. You can't just expect kids to, for, you just said walking in the room, you can't expect kids to walk in a room and understand what that is. And there's so many times, especially in my earlier parts of my career, I felt like I was so frustrated with the kids, but really I was frustrated myself because I did not teach them this. But what you're teaching them is the philosophy about how to think. Yes. How to, how to be a good person, I always say. And, and put the, whatever happened in the last class, just leave it at the door, and now we're in bands, and, and we're working for a completely different cause. Right, right. It's yeah. building relationships, and I think exactly. no matter what art form you're teaching, the relationship comes down to good pedagogy is good pedagogy, but if the kids don't care, and you don't care about the kids, then you're not going to get anywhere. Or right. you could get a lot further if you put more time in that relationship. Yeah, and you mentioned it's February in the filming of this, but I feel like right now, especially with Valentine's Day, that when that happens, all of a sudden the eighth graders go nuts. Yes. Uh, and all of a sudden uh, I have my first chair, uh, or my second chair saxophone likes my first chair saxophone. Uh -oh. And I'm like, leave that at the door, please, because we got a tune, all right? Yes, there's a time and place for that. It's called college. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you had a quote earlier, never volunteer negative information. Correct. Uh, how do the kids then use that in translate that into your classroom? Sometimes they'll, instead of coming up and volunteer negative information, they'll, they'll creatively ask the question. And it's like, what was last night's a homework assignment? And I'm like, I'm so glad you asked. And, and that, then they're, they're seeking information or clarification rather than, I didn't do last night's um, homework or, or things right. like that. Right. We have lots of fun with it. So when you're talking about never volunteering negative information, now how does that translate to uh, they're playing an A natural instead of an A flat? 
Oh yes, and they're very aware of that. Um, that that's kind of like we, we, we always get a, a, a kick out of owning their own mistakes. And it's, it's not criticism, it's just acceptance. Like, okay, when I give you feedback, it's for the betterment of everybody and yourself. It's not like I'm personally assaulting your intelligence. So like when they will play an A-flat, it's like own it, and they'll, they'll raise your hand, and right. then we move on. And when no one owns it, then it's an awareness factor. And then it's like, okay, let's evaluate. Oh, it's a misprint in your part, my bad. Right. Um, and then just moving it, taking that teach teachable moment and moving on. I, I learned something from uh, someone a long time ago, and I honestly forget who it was, but uh, we do a thumbs up. Yep. And the thumbs up in my program, it, it's not intrusive, it's not a, a anything that's going to get anybody's way, and it's actually kind of personal, sure. because most people don't see if, if a kid just does a thumbs up, it's between me and them. And what that means is a thumbs up, I tell my kids, means um, they just made a mistake, they knew what the mistake was, and they know how to fix it. So the thumbs up just says, Mr. Beal, I got it. Yep. And that helps me, and I try to train them at sixth grade to do this, but that helps me particularly when I get into like a top band rehearsal, um, and they know they just played a wrong note. I don't have to go down the row and find it, because by the, by the way, how many times do we, oh, I heard something wrong, and I start going down, and I hear every clarinet play that thing, and now it's all right, and they all play it perfect. Right. Well, I just wasted four minutes of my rehearsal trying to find it, but really the solution was already fixed. Correct. Because they figured it out. Now, I, I will admit that a couple of times I, I got a trumpet player that's always, and I'm like, stop. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't mean you can keep on doing it. You have to fix it. <laughs> Working on it. Right. So now tell me about your other session that is, you said has got a lot of traction, uh, teaching with your hair on fire. Absolutely. <laughs> like that has kind of been my mantra. Um, we used to have a program, in our band program and in Keller ISD, we have um, some of our programs teach every other day, so we don't see our kids every day. So we had to figure out a way to teach like our hair's on fire, and, and it was with a sense of urgency. So we always had a plan, we always had a mission. Um, now that was always evolving based on the needs of our kids. Um, and then moving it so that the teach like your hair's on fire, they're actually learning with a higher. There's more sense of ownership and there's a sense of urgency with the student in the room rather than it's all teacher based. And as soon as that culture started switching of like the kids understood that they had to move with a purpose to their seat and like that was a good body language. Okay, I'm learning, I'm sitting the right way because that's going to be a faster learning environment or I'm, I'm whether I ask a question with a loud voice so it doesn't have to be repeated so we're not wasting classroom time. So it was, it's just been a great uh, uh, philosophy to go by is just like, okay, we're just going to put the pedal to the metal and, and see what happens. So it sounds like you're also kind of just talking about the energy in the room. Absolutely. So, I say. so um, what I want to know is how do you get that to then translate over? Because, um, for instance, I'm, I'm thinking of a rehearsal that I had last week or the week before um, with our second band, and it's just everybody's kind of in that, like, zone out mode and you know I see one guy looking over here and this and that and then it takes forever to get their horns up how do I get my kids to do what your kids are doing um, I always try to bring a high level of, of energy to every classroom and we all have our off days um, caffeine helps a lot uh, and moving on to uh, like their job is not to react to certain things, let me react. And, and my job is to overreact usually. So when I overreact and I have a, a, a big thing, they get a giggle moment out of it, and then we all refocus and then we move on. So just trying to get everybody else. We also, like when, when, the, when those days are happening, we'll stand up and do some breathing exercises or stretching or to kind of find the, the peace and balance. Um, and then sit down or something great. You can tell the environment in the room is a little bit different. It's like, okay, tell your neighbor something that happened important in the last 24 hours. Uh, and then they can just have that, that um, permission to talk, so to speak, um, and let something out or tell them something silly. And, and that, that kind of builds the environment back up and we move on. So it sounds like you're training the kids to do this from day one when they're in your program. Um, is it something that you overtly identify and talk about or is it something that you just think happens because of y'all's nature and how you do it? I think every teacher has their own personality and how they instruct. Um, I try to build that personality from day one and build that relationship from day one. Um, there are certain non-negotiables that we talk about and when they come in, I'm like, you've been doing everything wrong. Okay, now we're really gonna show you how to sit. Now we're really gonna show you how to breathe and, and just kind of make a game out of pretty much as much as we possibly can. Um, and the sticker, like whether it's a sticker, a high five or, or whatever, they, they get kind of a sense of ownership of, oh, it's easy to be successful in band. And then you just keep amping it up and not telling them what's harder. And eventually they're achieving things that they didn't think they could. So we, we definitely bring a lot of, I try to bring a lot of energy to the, to the classroom. Um, but those non-negotiables, like how you sit, how you breathe, how you interact with each other, like you're not gonna belittle someone else uh, in the classroom because it's not conducive to a good environment. 
So it sounds like too, it's it's the again going back to the energy, it's the management of the energy. Oh yeah. Because you know you mentioned okay, you're feeling the energy in the rooms going this way, so you have to change it. Yep. You know, change that up and, and, and kind of rattle them, do breathing, talk about something else. Right? Yeah, that if I could bottle that energy from the first time they open that instrument case to like mid October blahs or January where you're trying to like it's that you they get up before dark and they go home before after the sun's down. Um, it'd be great if we could bottle that energy and give it back to them. Um, but you just got to find a way every day. Yeah. yeah. Well, David, thank you so much for being on the program. I'm definitely going to take some of my uh, hair on fire experience here to my program this next week. Uh, and it's been great to get to meet you. Again. Great to get to know you. It's thanks, been my pleasure. Thanks, thanks for so being much. on the program. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Beyond the Cliff. For more great content, subscribe on our website at beyondthecleft.com. And be sure to follow us on YouTube, iTunes, SoundCloud, and Facebook.